Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, we talk Micah Hudson ripple effect. Also, fall fashion and setting the mood at Jones Stadium next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And thanks to those making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over five infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Com. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you once again. Happy little Friday to all who celebrate. And before we truly turn the page to what's going down Saturday from Jones Stadium Tech in Tarleton State, wanted to kick off today's episode spending a little bit of time on what was some really big news this week and a possible ripple effect, I guess we can call it. An echo, whatever you want to say as it relates to what happens after you get a five-star commit from Lake Belton wide receiver Micah Hudson. And you've also got some perspective as well with what you've done for so long there at RedRaiderSports.com, part of the Rivals Network. On the landscape at large that I think is interesting as it relates to the new era of college football recruiting we're within. Whether you attribute it to NIL or other factors, the landscape has changed. I don't think there's any denying that but part of what is so exciting about Micah Hudson deciding to commit to Texas Tech Chris I think is also the impact he could have on some other really good football players yeah you you, you just can't talk about this uh kid and and this uh addition and and what it means enough in my opinion because this is this is uncharted territory kind of history making type stuff for and I and I think some people probably listening to us follow recruiting very closely others aren't really worried about it but I mean at the end of the day stars do matter they just do I mean (laughs) go 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 look at you know the teams that are routinely playing in the playoff and that have played in the BCS championships and now the college football playoff and all that stuff and then go look at the direct correlation into their recruiting rankings for the team and all those kinds of things but the portal is is changed uh, the landscape a bit um, I think NIL as you mentioned has changed it uh, a bit um, but but I, I think I think Mike uh, it, it, like opened some eyes a bit um, I think it 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 has a chance to pay some some dividends here is that it, it turns some heads because this isn't just a top recruit picking Texas Tech it's the sixth best player in the country picking Texas Tech and he's here in the state of Texas and I, I think like uh, direct correlation I don't know but I mean you, you know you've got in, in the in the next class because the 2024 class which Micah is a part of is largely put together now that's the class that will sign they can sign early in December which I think Micah and all of his all the commitments will likely do that but uh, but then the, the the signing date is the other signing date is in I think early February of, of 2024. So we're already they're already starting to work on the 25 class, and like you'll have a top 100 national player on campus this weekend. You know, just days after, uh, and he and he's on the defensive side. Uh, you know that that's been reported at RedRaiderSports.com. And hello, hello. That's right. He defensive plays defensive side. end. Yeah, and also from the state of Texas. And so I, I do think there's some rub there. I think that it's it's one of those things like because you know like look at it, A um, and M is not, you know, for all the hype that Texas is getting right now, A and M is not doing so well. There's a lot of questions about the future of the head coach there, and for all that they've done from a recruiting standpoint, and they're always going to get really good players. They just are, yeah, because of proximity to Houston and facilities and, and all the things. Uh, Baylor is not necessarily on the most steady ground either. And and although you're 0 and 2, you're on completely stable, steady ground with your staff and facilities. And you're kind of, in some ways, kind of this cool 
thing going on right now with what with what Joey is building and, and the staff and, and a lot of hype and and all those kinds of things. And I think that Micah won't be the last big time guy that says yes, like nationally. Uh, what I mean, not just good recruit or good class, but like maybe you can still continue to make a splash. And like I, I think there's some. You know, you know, it's early in the season, but I think people are start. They write about different things. I think some people ha- have actually started to to put some correlation to. If you just look at the SEC overall, it's not as good as maybe everybody thought it was going to be. Shocker. You know, based on their record, look at their record versus other Power Five teams and all those things early in the year. I mean, the Bama Texas thing is a prime example. But I think, you know, th- th- there's there's a lot of those teams that have lost a few non-conference games. And then you look at the Pac-12. On paper, it's just crazy. Point is, <laughs> I think you're starting to see a little bit of parity kind of creeping in. The portal has created that. NIL has created that. I think if you look at the top 50 players, I think, in the country right now on the rivals rankings, I think there there is um, – I want to say close to like it's like fifteen to diff, fifteen to twenty different schools represented of the top fifty players in the country. Missouri's there, Texas Tech is there, Boise's there, South Carolina's there. Um, uh, I think Ole Miss is there, and then you've got a lot of the blue bloods there too. Sure. Okay, the, the traditional ones. Point being, I think it's interesting because if if Texas Tech gets a legitimate top guy. One of the Blue Bloods didn't get him. This was a perception commitment as much as anything, but it's also a bit of a sign of the times, I think, where kids aren't as afraid to like sway a little bit uh, because of the portal and NIL and all the things that factor into the sport these days. They want something different at, at times and, and all that. So anyway, it's just uh, – uh, I, I think this was a huge addition, but I do think it's got a chance to pay some dividends too. And like the Will Hammond thing too, I, th- I think that's a, a big time an elite eleven guy. I think that you know, good players want to play with good players. That's just the way it's always worked. And sometimes a good player can go. There's too much competition there for me to like want to deal with all that, but. But that that is not in play as much as you think because a lot of times good players have ability and they also have ego and they're like I don't care who's there, like like sign me up like I know maybe life will be easier or I'm going to get more looks because I'm with good players we're going to win more games and so I, I think this has a chance to to pay some dividends here. I think back when the NIL thought first came to being as to what it would look like or feel like. So many said, oh, the richer are going to get richer. The richer are going to get richer, as if that's not what was going to happen anyway. That's all that ever happens. The best team gets the first pick. It's the opposite of what happens in the National Football League. I was going the other way, thinking as a Texas Tech fan, and of course this is some hopeful, optimistic thinking, but I'm thinking, no, you know what? Actually, I think if there is somewhere, and this is only NIL uh, related, if there is a very motivated uh, motivated or resourced group of supporters or fans or whatever at this school or that school, whatever it may be, you may find all of a sudden an ability to insert yourself into a conversation that you weren't previously. So maybe the rich do continue to get richer, but does it actually allow some others to join a category recruiting-wise or resource-wise they weren't in previously, and I'm I'm obviously not mad at that. Uh, if that is the case, as a Texas Tech fan, I wonder. From another spoke in the wheel, I want to ask you because you've done this for so long. I know what's going to be thrown at us as we're having this conversation out there. You're excited about this. You're excited about that. You're zero and two at the same time. How many recruits want to join a team that presently has not got a steam of momentum as far as the win loss record? We can talk about the Aggies on the road from Coral Gables or anybody else, but we're in a similar category. But it seems like fans maybe sometimes, I don't know, overstate that present reality's impact. What have you seen in all the years on the beat? You're talking about players that are making decisions based on the next three to five years. Not not, not like, okay, did they win Saturday or did they lose Saturday? Well, I don't want to go here because they just <laughs> lost the game on the visit that I was at. Because – what good recruiters do, and see, I think that's why fans sometimes get caught up into the wrong things. 
a good a good recruiter will look at this is not what needed to happen. But for example, let's play let's play position coach here. If I'm talking to Micah Hudson and he's on my campus and we just lose to Oregon, he comes into my office Sunday morning. And you kind of get this doom and gloom. Everybody's mad at the head coach. Everybody's mad at the quarterback. Everybody's mad at the play caller. Everybody's mad about turnovers and we can't win a game and all this all this hype and all that stuff. However, I look at this stud player and prospect across from me and I say, son, this is why we need you here. You are that next piece that can get this thing turned around. We're missing a little juice on offense. You can provide that. You can see how much support we had in that stadium and the kind of atmosphere we can create. However, you're the final piece that can get us to where we want to go and get this program turned around to where it needs to be. And if you and if you would have won the game the night before, I can pitch that too. You know, it, it's it's like you know, sure. help us keep it going, help help us sustain what we've got rolling. Or these guys graduate, we need the next in line, and we want to improve on it. But yeah, it, the the immediacy of the wins and losses is not what you think. It's really atmosphere. It's butts in the seats. It's it's scheme. It's major, it's proximity to parents, it's head coach, maybe more than in position coach and coordinator, much more than you would think or much more than it, than it should be. But that's the reality of it because those things change all the time. But uh, there's so much that comes into these things. And I think for Micah, so many of those things were in play. Proximity, staff, scheme, quarterback, um, you know, proximity, geography, all the things because parents weren't going to, and he's a legacy. You know, yeah. the, you know, Desmond Royal played defensive line here back, I think, for Spike Dykes back in the day. And I think, um, I think he, you know, that that's that's Micah's dad. So, um, I, I think there's a variety of things that can come into play, but yeah, but, but a, a win and a loss honestly is far from. What, what would make a kid jump in or out, you know? Um, yeah, so it gets overblown probably yes. by a, a lot of those having that kind of conversation. And if we're talking about attracting players in general uh, in this day and age, Chris, we got to be talking threads. First, today's episode brought to you by Jace Medical. And in this day and age, everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones when hit with the unexpected. And that's why Jace Medical is offering the Jace Case. The Jace Case includes five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind. So you're not just hoping for access to medication during an emergency. With Jace Medical and the Jace Case, what you need is already in hand. And they make it simple. Handling everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery, along with ongoing consultation and care. And with shortages, pandemics, reliance on China, and general supply chain issues, you need to be prepared now more than ever. So to do just that, head to jacemedical.com, where the process is simple. Just fill out a form and bam, prescription life-saving medications are headed to your door. And right now, save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using our code locked on at checkout. Again, that's jacemedical.com, J A S E medical.com, and the code is locked on for an added $20 off at checkout. And don't be caught unprepared with the Jace case from Jace Medical. And if we're talking about attracting players in general uh, in this day and age, Chris, we got to be talking threads, my man. And I'm seeing photos. Speaking of Pat Mahomes, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm seeing photos of Phil Knight on the Jones Stadium turf. You're telling us last week about the congregation of uh, apparel manufacturers who were going to be in the LBK over the weekend. So could we get an update possibly on an apparel mm -hmm. status? As it relates to Texas Tech, you told us last week, Under Armour. Kevin Plank, I believe, as well. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but then Phil Knight and Nike and Adidas representatives as well, as well, all going to be there at Jones Stadium for the weekend. So did that actually come to fruition and anything to share as far as the impact on the other side? Yeah, you know, because I, I, think, I think some are not – as interested in this as others are, but I think a lot of people, uh, for whatever reason, the, the, these are the people that are very interested in the uniform combination that you're wearing or, or the look or the apparel that you can go buy at the store. There's a lot of interest in this kind of subject. I, I have maintained 
I don't really have an opinion on what brand you ultimately sign with. I just would say, well, hey, man, whatever's best for tech. But I think what's happened is, is you've got some interest. Uh, your contract is up. There's interest in more than one party, at least. And so there's a, I don't know, I guess the right term would be leverage here. You've got some interest. And so ultimately, I think Texas Tech is going to end up in a better spot um, going forward than they are currently. Your deal is up, I think, next June or July, I believe, with Under Armour. There is an exclusive negotiating window there that Under Armour has. Uh, they also, and this is very important to note as well, Under Armour has the right, I think there's like a 20 to 21 day range to where if somebody from outside were to say, we are offering Texas Tech uh, an, an, an apparel agreement that Under Armour has three weeks, let's just say, to match it, to look it over and to go, okay, we, we are matching this um, or, or you know what, we, we're out. Like we, 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 it was a great 17-year relationship, we're out. So with whatever we talk about going forward, just understand Under Armour has the right – they've negotiated this. Uh, they have a long-term relationship with Texas Tech. And I, and I will say this about Under Armour. They don't want to lose Texas Tech. They feel like Texas Tech is one of the originals with them. They've been together for 17 years, really, since they got in this space, and they've been fair. They've bought themselves out of some bad deals in, in the in the country. They've just re-upped with Notre Dame. They made a run at Kansas State. I think Kansas State ended up uh, re-upping with Nike. But Under Armour doesn't want to lose you, and so they're very aware of kind of all the interest here. Now the interest is coming from Adidas. Adidas, I believe, had representatives on campus. I want to say this has been twice in the last month to six weeks. I don't know all the minutiae here, but I, I know that Adidas has been here twice. I believe that around the, I guess it was last Friday maybe, an Adidas had a meeting with, with Texas Tech. I think the expectation is now that there's been multiple meetings, there's going to be an offer made from Adidas to Texas Tech. I think this largely revolves around the Pat Mahomes brand, like kind of similar to the Jordan brand. This would be a, a something new. I think Pat has been approached by the University of Kansas, who is also an Adidas school, and obviously he plays for the Chiefs. Uh, well, hey, man, what about we, we do something together? And I think Pat has said, if I ever do anything like this, it will be with Texas Tech. That's what I think part of the conversation here is. Um, and again, whatever is pitched, whatever is offered or whatever, Under Armour can match this, whether it's money or product, or we want you to do more things for us. Um, and so I don't, but I, I think you're going to get some resolution here fairly quickly. I, in fact, I would say, you know, I would say by October, mid October, maybe we have clarification on what has happened, uh, who offered, we, we've we've matched it. We've declined to match it. We've whatever, I think. But I think at the end of the day, this is an Under Armour or an Adidas conversation. But ultimately, Texas Tech ends up in a better spot than they are now. So Interesting, to say the least. And yeah, yeah I think most that were understanding what was happening uh, with Phil Knight and the Oregon Ducks being in town uh, we're probably figuring Adidas Under Armour. Is there some off chance? And I mean, I'm well, with you, no rooting interest, but yeah. is there some off chance that the world's biggest uh, sports apparel manufacturer gets involved with Texas Tech? Well, the guy that has the checkbook is in town, so maybe something to note at least. And and, and that's still possible because you're you're in this window here where your deal's about to come up. So if Nike wanted yeah. to get involved, and you had the head the head guy there, I think Texas Tech was probably. You know, if, if I'm them, I was probably pretty, you know, smart with how I treated Phil Knight when he was in town just because of who he is and what he represents. And I'd have bought him uh, a beer at least. Well, yeah. something. Some First beer. rounds on G me. Give him some brisket and a beer <laughs> like, and whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> complimentary I'll, stadium back seat. I don't know. I'll also throw you this that the Adidas component comes with a sim, and, and this is fairly normal in what Adidas is doing. Uh, out there because I don't think what they do, they can necessarily provide everything a, an athletic department needs from an apparel practice gear, uniform stuff or whatever. So there is actually a, a bit of a partnership deal. So with, with Lululemon, uh, 
So if Adidas, if it's an Adidas deal, it's kind of like an Adidas Lululemon agreement. And and I think Adidas though would be the brand that everybody sees, but like everyday pants and just workout gear, sweatshirts. I mean, there's there's a Lululemon component uh, <laughs> as well. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody's got the full a uh, lot of information. But if I'm Texas Tech man, I I. I I'm trying to do right by our ring of honor guy and our quarterback. But again, Under Armour's negotiated that right to where they, they can, they've got first right of refusal. Like, okay, we're in for what these guys were going to do. We want to continue our relationship or they can, they can pass on it. If, if Adidas were to put it so far out there, they're like, man, this just doesn't make sense for us. We, we wish you well. So I don't know, but it's going to be my opinion, one of those two. So we'll see. I, I'd say damn the time limit on the episode and just kick her on a little further down the track just to hear you continue to say Lululemon, honestly. If I'm being totally honest, I just like hearing you say Lululemon. Hey, they make good, they make good pants, man. I'll just say that. They're not for ladies? I thought ladies' clothes, aren't they? Or no? no, they make a ton of men's right. stuff. I don't know anything. Yeah. They're not in Jeebos, are they? No. I don't not. think they're in Jeebos yet. They're so not. They're not quite they're on my not. radar, but they're maybe not. on some others who know some things. Uh, Chris, I mentioned the Jones Stadium turf which was also new and nice, but I didn't get yep. to run around on it, so I can't really speak to it. You were down there. Maybe you got some reps in, but I was wondering also whether it's the turf, the sound, the mood lighting, whatever we had going on at the Jones. How did it feel from your perspective? First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. And buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be a stress-inducing experience, but if you've ever done it, you know it can be, especially last minute but not with game time. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for sports, concerts, and much, much more. Not just fast, secure, and easy to use, but you're also going to find unbeatable deals on last-minute tickets. And with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing and start pre-gaming. Download the Game Time app today and rest easy with the Game Time guarantee, knowing you're always going to get the best prices, and you can have them in a flash, delivered straight to your phone. Snag tickets without the stress, with Game Time and just download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and use the promo code Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets and the lowest price guaranteed. Whether it's the turf, the sound, the mood lighting, whatever we had going on at the Jones, how did it feel? From your perspective, I actually said this during the broadcast, um, and I and I was trying to make sure that I wasn't like getting this recency bias that we kind of sometimes get caught up in. I thought that was one of the best atmospheres I had ever been in from a college football standpoint, especially in Lubbock, Texas. I don't know whether it was the stripe out. I don't know it was because the lights are going on and off. I don't know is because it was just a big time game, a, a, a well contested game until the very end. Um, I, I think because it's not even a new sound system either. The sound, the new, the, the sound system, the new part comes next year. Um, and I thought for whatever reason things sounded louder. Um, it just and the fans like nobody left at halftime. I mean, it was awesome. Um, I had I've had talked to coaches on the the tech staff that have been a variety of different places. Uh, elsewhere and other conferences and all that stuff, and they all kind of echoed that like this is unbelievable. Like this is this is one of the best, you know, and seeing that's the kind of thing that can sell a recruit. That's that's the kind of thing, regardless of the outcome of the game, that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of juice and the energy that a prospect can go, put me in this environment all the time. I can do this, man. And I and I even think like Joey even mentioned this when he was talking about Caleb Rogers, I think on the show that we did yesterday about how he had more fun. That's what it's about. I mean, I, th I think those kids, it's fun when it's when it's like electric in there. It's fun. And I think you, you credit the wh – whoever puts on the presentation of the game, whether it's like how much band, how much can music, how much light, how much – how do we get a flyover, how much pyro. It's all the pomp and the circumstance that comes with a college game, and that's why people – Love being there. And yeah, you, you know, a lot of people don't go to games anymore. They stay at home because of TV and I'd rather go to the bar. But you were there. There's just nothing like some of that stuff when, when you're there with a with a beer in your hand and your team scores a touchdown. And 
all that stuff. There's just nothing that can replicate that. And that's why college is always going to be different than pros and any other thing, because you just get like real emotion in the stands. Oh, no question, man. I, I still got every hair on my body standing <laughs> up and I'll leave it to your imagination to know what that count is. When the horse runs out, whenever the uh, drum majors, I still don't know if they're going to make it all the way through before the band collapses on them. I just get so fired up. And then, yeah, the flyover, incredible. And I'll go ahead and take credit for it. Doff the cap, took off the Stetson, gave him a tip. I think that's why he tipped the wings. Otherwise, it was just going to be a straight flyover, but I think he saw the cap tip, so he did a little tip of the wings. Was off the hook. The LED lighting, I don't know what you paid for it, but it was a bargain because that was amazing and will give you a little more uh, voltage. No question about it. In a timeout or a change of possession or or whatever it might be, man. That, it, that was a lot of fun. It, it was, you know, because we, we experienced this, and I remember talking to you about it after the NC State game last year. That was my first, yes. um, you know, in, environment to where, you know, the, this this new updated lightning and we're, we're lighting, I should say, that, that they could do some of these different things. And um, I, I was like, because, I mean, they score a touchdown, all of a sudden the place just goes pitch black, like on an instant. You're like, what just happened? And then all of a sudden it starts lighting, you know, the, the red glow, and it starts dancing around. So that was my first experience. And so with, with Texas Tech, I didn't know what this was going to look like, how it was going to feel. Or is it going to be overused, underused, um, corny? I, I don't know. It was <laughs> awesome. I mean, yeah, I thought great. it was a 10 out of 10. Um, when they when they changed it all red, I, I don't know. There was just something about it. I, I just it was fun, and it it's only going to necessarily work in the night game environment. You know, you're going to get that with the TCU game, and yep. you know, coming up. I don't if you have an 11 a.m. kick. I don't know if the neon or if the LED lights are going to be able to to have the same effect with the environment. But sign me up, man. I mean, I thought it was legit, man. I mean, you could inject it right into my veins because you could just hear the oohs and the ahs from the crowd that was enjoying and it's all synchronized to the music playing and all that stuff. And I don't know, I, I, I got a kick out of it. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. I, I thought it was off the hook. All we're lacking is roof Raider. And then we're really going to be back cooking <laughs> with peanut oil. And you know what time it is whenever you're back partying with roof Raider. All right, Chris, uh, appreciate the time as always, my man, we got one more to go. We're going to zero in on Tarleton state coming up tomorrow as we get ready for what's going down saturday back at jones stadium so looking forward to being back with you to do that tomorrow see you then yeah and the flyover man the super hercules i think was mm -hmm. the the name of that plane you know or kind of plane that tipped the wing i was like man go america i mean i love me a flyover man and plenty of pyro was, too right yes at the same time you got more pyro dude i, I don't I remember mean, the surrounding oh. pyro so much so that's oh, always good loved it yeah i uh, i'm all about it they did a phenomenal job so i was anyway. thinking about you at that time and i meant to send you a video but i got so caught up and dousing myself in peanut oil i just wanted to send you a picture <laughs> of your dream game day but uh maybe this next time around when yes. Charleston state isn't yes. and i apologize to those around me there in section 102 forgot to pass out the tarps before that peanut oil incident next time I got you covered. That is a Chris level guarantee. And, okay. and you were spotted. Apparently, uh, you were spotted quite a bit in the stands. Uh, people were like, "You're the you're the locked on guy." Well, you, I got yeah. some love from some Ducks fans. I mentioned that. I love it. I love. And it. we got some locked on Texas Tech love from some Worldwide, good guys. Man. That's Worldwide. right. In we red and black. All listeners, we appreciate people supporting what we do here. That's it's right. been fun. And, uh, and we will do it again tomorrow. We'll talk about a little uh, Joey McGuire radio show, I believe, uh, on tomorrow's show. That's right. Um, and uh, Tarleton, the Texans. I think their hand symbol is like this deal, <laughs> I, I think. I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, Some, so. uh, for those listening on the podcast, it's something along the lines of a proctologist <laughs> posture. But uh, just leave that, I guess, to your yeah. own imagination. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, appreciate hearing from all of, yep. all of you out there saw me on game day and said what's up and you listen to locked on texas tech and next time uh the beautiful women out there feel free to approach as well because it was just straight dudes this time but it's all right next time around i think they were just holding back a he's bit married back, people a little he's bit married shy. but he's married. you want you still want to feel dangerous so say hello out there I folks hear, i hear you Fair back enough. to be dangerous tomorrow on the next episode hope you'll join us then on locked on texas tech <laughs>